All right, we're back with some more cakewalk content for you. Looking at the compressor today, checking out how it works, how we can use it to increase our mixes, how we can use it to add shape and color to the tracks that we're working on, uh, and overall as a glue for the whole thing. So I've got some uh, preloaded snares that I've got here for you. It's a great way to show what the different things do on a compressor. So let's just listen to that, uh, what I've got so far. Very simple snare sound. I took the same one and just copied it down and I've applied the same compression but three different values to it. So let's check it out, what we've got. Here's our original channels. I threw on some EQ but they're the same for each channel. Just a tiny bit of cleaning up the bass and the hi-hats, giving us a bit more focus on the snare itself. So, uh, here's the compressor in Cakewalk. We've got a few different variables that we need to be aware of, a few different parameters, and what they do. This threshold is the point at which the compressor starts working. What does it do when a compressor kicks in? It compresses. It's pretty simple. It's just as you would imagine. It takes a certain amount of volume and it squashes it, compresses it down, makes it quieter. There is a misconception that a compressor will make the quiet things louder. It's not true it's a byproduct of compression. When you take the loud bits and make them quieter, it means you can turn the volume up. When you turn the volume up, you always make everything louder, including the quiet bits. So a compressor allows you to turn up the quiet bits, but it's a byproduct of what it does. What it actually does is compresses the loud bits. And what it compresses is set by the threshold. That's the level at which the compressor kicks in and starts compressing. And we can see that uh, right here. This is the level, negative 12.1 dB. And once that snare drum gets above it, it's going to compress currently at a ratio of 7 to 1. So for every 7 dB that goes above that threshold, the compressor says, nah, you're only going up 1 decibel. So that's the ratio. Uh, how much it's compressing. So 7 to 1 is quite a, a steep compression. It's quite heavy. It's doing a whole lot of work. And down here we have the attack and the release. And this is really uh, a lot of where your color comes in. These two parameters give you a lot of control over how things are going to sound. And the attack is what it sounds like. It's how quickly it gets in there and attacks and starts to compress. So when it gets above this threshold here, what we have is negative 12.1 dB. How long does it take until the compressor starts? Right now it's set at zero milliseconds, so immediately, once it gets over that threshold, the compressor starts to compress. Uh, you can change that variable, and we'll get into what that does. The release is how long does it take for the compressor to release. So it's compressed, it's in there, how many milliseconds does it wait? until it starts to release. Right now it's set at 23. That's quite quick, quite a fast attack time uh, and very quick release time. But we're gonna see what that does. So let's check it out. That's, this is our first snare one. I've already uh, bounced it down for you so you can see what happens. Now, this is our waveform of that snare hit. Okay, this is the original up here and this is the compressed one. So at zero milliseconds immediately that snare drum is hit and it is chopped off a whole bunch of volume right straight through to 23 milliseconds it lets go and the rest gets through free so that's a that's what it's actually done it's taking your waveforms and squashed them down now we have the second one which is exactly the same everything except for the attack is 15.2 release is still the same 23 the attack is 15.2 now, so we have that first one right there. That's with a very fast attack. This second one is with a slower attack. So now you can see this first bit of that snap has got through the compressor and it's not done anything to it. It's only after that that it's compressed, right? So it waited 15 milliseconds before it started compressing. This third one now same parameters except for the attack time. 
the attack is 54.8. So what did that do to it? Well, it let a whole lot more through and then it compressed it, right? So the attack time is really vital uh, in finding that, that balance of time that you're looking for to see how much are we gonna cut off at the beginning and how much we can let through. These are called transients. Uh, and it's a really important part of understanding the compressor and how it works and how you can get the most out of it. So something like a snare, we don't really want to cut off that attack, uh, but sometimes it's just too much. And so you're, you're doing a balance of letting certain frequencies come through and cutting the rest off, making them quieter. Uh, so it's a, a bit of just a trial and error. You have to get into it. You have to look at it. You have to play with it to figure out what it sounds like. So let's hear that original. Uh, as composed to the ones we have compressed. And I'll just minimize these down for visual sake. So that's the first original. Here is the first compression with a really fast attack time. And here's the next one with a slower attack time. Here that attack is a bit stronger because you haven't actually cut the attack off. And here's the one with the 50 uh, millisecond, which basically isn't doing much to this snare at all. So it essentially just sounds the same as the original. A little bit more snap, but. There you go, so that's that's the very basics of a compressor and getting into it in Cakewalk. So the compressor does a few things. One, it's a bit of volume control. Sometimes people are just too loud and you just wanna turn them down. So you throw a compressor on there, very generic attack terms, very generic release. Uh, doesn't really do much color to it, but it controls their volume and that's what you want. The compressor also allows you to bring color as we talked about. But what it also does is it can bring a sense of gluing and sticking together in a mix. So if you have a multiple background vocals, we'll say, and you want them to sound all as one, but then no matter how much you mix them, it seems like they're always, you can always hear them individually and it doesn't really want you want. It doesn't sit well in the mix. So if you take all of those and you put them into a bus, um, then you can compress that bus and it's like you're compressing all of them as one. They're all going through the same compressor, so they all get that same smashing, the same cutting off of the volume, and it helps to gel them together into one unit a whole lot more than they were before. Uh, so that's one trick you can do. Uh, the way that this is set up here in Cakewalk, we can take it to uh, this instead of sending it to a master output we can send it to one of these buses that's been set up. We'll say preview. Uh, we can send these two to it, and then we could come over to preview, uh, which we can name snares. Okay, if we had the two different snares, we wanted them to gel together as one. Perhaps if it's a, a bottom and a top, and you wanna make them sound like they're one unit, then we can bring the compressor over to the, right there, to the snares, and there you go. We can compress that, we can work on the threshold, we can change the attacks and the release, uh, as well as what we already did over here. So creating a bus for specific instruments or specific groupings and sending their output to that bus gives you even greater control that you've shaped their sound, you've made them sound like what you want on the individual channel, just like we've done here, but then you can bus them to somewhere else and then you can glue them together and you can do things to them as a whole. So if we wanted to as well, we could put some EQ in there to reshape the sound of that. Maybe we want to boost something or we want to cut something. So we can do that to everything that we've put into that bus. It's a really handy thing to do. I do it all the time in all of my mixes. Uh, it's a great way to get things to sound together, to sound close. Uh, to sound unified and to adjust things as a whole. Uh, and another good tip is to almost always have your compression directly after your EQs or somewhere down the chain from your EQ. Because especially when you are boosting, 
if you're boosting e anywhere in the EQ range, that's going to stand out and it could, especially at louder volumes, it could push through the mix that you don't want. It's going to sound a bit funny. It's going to sound a bit uh, too much of that one area. But if you take that sound into the compressor, that one frequency is going to be compressed with everything else, but it's going to be that slight bit louder than everything else is, which is what you wanted. But it's going to help to tame those frequencies to make sure they're not just flying wherever they want to go and creating havoc in your mix. Also a good idea to do that compression after reverb, just taking a subtle bit off to do the same thing to make sure there's no stray frequencies, nothing getting through that doesn't sound nice. Well, I hope that was helpful for you guys. There will be more Cakewalk content coming soon, so stick with me.